आत्मा के सर्वोगिराम सुरत कुमारा पढ़ावस्तु Today, the auspicious day of Pongal, Makara Sankaranti, the day the sun god is worshipped, especially for the bounties that we get because of his blessings of light. It's also the day, the first day, the sun, which has been appearing in the southeast all along, would begin to move towards the north. <coughs> From now on, it will start <coughs> rising in the northeastern side, slowly moving towards further and further north. So there is bound to be a change in the entire atmosphere. The sun god, Bhagwan used to say, every day one should sit for some time in the sun. And that would help keep away the diseases. It's the glory of the sun. And we know the story that happened in Bhagwan's life. That in the Sanadhi Street house, one day, when Bhagwan was seated there, some Christian missionaries had come there out of curiosity, the Indian Christian missionaries. And they had expected, because they'd been seeing people coming in crowds and prostrating before Bhagwan, coming to know about it out of curiosity they also visited to see what was involved in all this. And they saw people coming one after the other and prostrating before this man who had only rags, very dirty rags at that, and the unkempt hair And above all, the smoke, continuous smoking, unheard of, of a Mahatma. They were indeed surprised that how could anybody accept such a man as a great soul? So after watching for some time, they raised the question, naturally because they had a doubt. It was genuine. The doubt was genuine. And Bhagwan always answered genuine questions. They were asking, Sir, we don't understand how it is here in our religion, a father attached to a church would go out into the crowds of people, move with them, 
listen to their problems, would live as one among them, would help them financially, deal with their problems, build hospitals, schools, and orphanages, what not. And they are truly fathers, and they convey the message of Jesus to those people. It's understandable. But here what we see, and you're smoking, you don't seem to move around, you don't seem to build anything, but still people come and prostrate. Then Bhagwan would not look at them, instead he addressed Sri Perumal Raju of Krishnagiri, seated opposite him. Perumal, do you see the sun up there in the sky? Yes, Swami. Perumal, does the sun build hospitals? Does the sun build orphanages or educational institutions? What do you say? But because of the sun, all these activities are taking place in the world. Perumal, a yogi is like that sun. You can imagine the words coming with the power of Bhagwan and the truth of his statement naturally went inside and they understood. They were genuine people with genuine doubts and they understood instantly what Bhagwan meant. They prostrated and left. So here is our Son God who admitted himself a yogi is like the sun. Why do we worship the sun? Because of the bounties, because of the agricultural abundance that we get by the blessings of the sun god. Now here is our Bhagwan, Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar, Esvayam Prakash, self-luminous sun, shining forth his inner wisdom shining forth the ultimate knowledge of God, the ultimate truth at the radiation of the pure awareness, the radiation of Brahmananda, the radiation of Arunachaleshwara. Originally, Lord Shiva stood here as a huge column of fire. And that's what solidified in course of time to what we now see as the stone mountain. But was it the fire, the physical fire that we see, the radiation of the sun that you see in the sky, this physical light, but the light of these great masters is the light of their wisdom, their oneness with God. It is the light of grace, it is the light of their power to mitigate the sufferings of the world, to destroy the adharmic activities and promote the dharmic activities. They work with the power of the Self. They radiate the power of the Self. And today, what can be more fitting than our worship, the worship that we offer to our Bhagwan Yogi Ram Sarukma, a devotee, a 
approached him. Paramacharya said, mentioning Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar of Tiruvannamali, he is, people like him are so far above. They live up there, up there. And then he added, Fred, they are from the lineage of the sun god. So this is another reference. Whatever it is, what we have to take is, it is the, the light of the highest truth. And any worship that is offered to our Bhagwan will truly be a celebration of Pongal, which means it is Pongal day every day for us. Every time we offer worship to Bhagwan, Yogi Ram Sarutma, who declared himself to be the son, the son of knowledge, the son of supreme knowledge, all the time radiating the only and the immediate expression of this highest knowledge is compassion. And out of compassion, he is standing here in front of us in all his glorious luminosity with raised hand and benediction, saying, I am here, do not fear. Come to me, think of me, and I will release you from all the sins, from all the sufferings. So, what do we do? How do we worship? What is the best way to worship Bhagwan? Bhagwan himself has said, if you want to be happy in life, you have to make God happy. And to make God happy is to chant His name. So all we have to do is remember His name. We have to keep on chanting the name. Tulsida says in one of his poems, when you light the diya, the lamp of Nama, on your tongue. You see, there's a lot of darkness inside, the darkness of our birds, many, many birds we have brought with us, because of which there is so much confusion, there is so much inner and outer suffering. Tulsida says, O devotees, O mind, light the lamp of Nama, Keep it on your tongue and your inner darkness will run away. The whole inner path will be lighted by the luminous Nama. He calls it money deep. So this is all we have to do. We have to keep chanting, remembering his name. The goal of life is only God for everybody. No matter where you live, in what walk of life, God is the goal. That is why we are given this body and the life that we have to lead, both the body and the life, only to move towards God. We do not know whether we would attain Him, whether we would become one with Him, but the only sure way is remembrance of God and that is remembrance of Nama. So let's keep on chanting, chanting. We have already chanted, offered the Nama flowers. We call it Nama Pushpa. You don't have to go out and pluck the flowers and offer it as puja. Offering the Nama flower is more difficult and it's in a higher plane. So let us keep offering our Nama flowers at his feet 
as much as possible, knowing for sure that he would accept it and grant our prayers. We shall submit today's prayers at his lotus feet. We know from the Puranic stories how God incarnated every time in order to kill the Asuras, the Rakshasas. And here is one Rakshasa who holds the entire world in his dreadful grip and we can't even get to see him and the world is panicking. Now the second round has started in the western countries and there is a second lockdown and people are panicking there. The only way out is seek the grace of God. So we shall offer our prayers let us pray to Bhagwan again and again, intensely, soulfully, for his immediate divine intervention to free the entire humanity from the clutches of this virus and bring back normalcy in every aspect of life, everywhere. Bhagwan, please remove the panic from the hearts of people and arrest the spread of the disease and enter the vaccine so that it would start working. It would kill the virus instantly and once for all. And all those brave soldiers who are in the field fighting the disease for the sake of others at the very risk of their life, Bhagawan, please give them your protection and a huge boost to the economy. Please support all the measures taken towards this improvement. And above all, give us constant remembrance of your name and to go about our life as an instrument in your hands, a fine instrument in your hands. Thou art the sun of our life, And thou art shining with your self-luminosity. Please make us shine. Fill us with your shine and power and purity. Jai Govindasi.